what inspires you? I want to help people learn to be happier. And so I said, I'm going to write a book like 12 Pillars where people can pick it up and read it in three hours and give it to those people who don't usually read, as well as those people who love to read, and really get something out of it right away. Like, I'm just going to get tips right away out of it that I can use tomorrow and change my life for the better. And so that's what inspired me. So thank you, Chris. <laughs> What does it mean in your life to, like, if you had to say, this is why my life is a 10 plus, I want to know what those are. Why is my life a 10 plus? Mm -hmm. My life is a 10 plus. I, I think, well, I feel happy in every area. My husband and I, we, we were talking the other day, and someone had asked the question for a seminar I was going to, list some problems. And I said, does this sound weird? I can't think of any. And he goes, I can't either. And, and I truly believe, of course, you know, something small. But I, I truly, and to me, sometimes my problems are when my friends have problems or my family has problems, of course. Then I, then I say, I, you know, that's my problem too, I'm going to help you. But in general, I really truly feel that if I was to take every area, spirituality and, and social life and relationships and career and my family and rate it, I'm really truly genuinely happy in every area. But I think that is due to being totally conscious all the time saying, you know, how am I living my life? Who am I spending time with? Who am I choosing to do business with? Who am I partnering up with? What am I doing? You know, am I having bad habits or good habits? Really just consciously always being aware and checking in. And the nice thing is if you get in the habit of doing that, you don't really have to anymore. It becomes like a natural thing that you just don't attract those things. You don't attract negativity anymore. And just years of working on myself, and I think just making that conscious choice, like I am going to make sure that my life is completely happy. And so, because I really do walk the walk and talk the talk, and, and of course I'm human and I have bad days and I get in a bad mood once in a while, but in general, I feel extraordinarily happy in every area. And so I want other, I genuinely want other people to too, and that's why I wrote the book. So. <laughs>
something. Mm -hmm. There's something like missing or something. And I, I knew for some reason that Amy was going to solve it. And since she's just a brilliant designer, she sent me to cover with sexy fit and fab at any age. And I, I knew that Amy was <laughs> going to, to, to solve it. And then it was just more fun. But it. then I added also my subtitle, which to me was very, very important. Mm -hmm. And it's say yes to your natural beauty, mm -hmm. being funny, <laughs> being funny, healthy, sexy, and inspired. So it's, although it's, you know, it's so fun to be sexy, fit, and fab, there's more to it. You know, there's your natural beauty, your, your personality, um, being inspired. You know one thing I had, when we were talking on the phone yes. before we got to all of this, that I wanted to cover with you on the Okay. Day. The one thing that I love is when we were talking about it, because for those of you, you and I shared a little bit about, you know, shortly after my daughter and I were living in the car and right. gotten into our bond. Yes. And, <laughs> and the one thing that she addresses and that we had talked about was, you know, there's there's so many dynamics of being beautiful, which by the way, everybody in here is just so amazing. I, mean, I, I look around and it's like a prerequisite to be in this room. You better be beautiful, apparently. So, <laughs> so I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> Um, but we had talked about that, and you, you know, you see people all the time, and you can put as much makeup on, do the right dress, do the right this, do the right that, and if you're not fixing what's in here, something's missing. And it's, and that's one thing that I took away from your book that I was reading. I, that's one thing I took away from it is we shared that that same belief system that you've also got to fix what's in here. You've got to identify what that is, and you know, you've got to start from every aspect. You've got to start from the woman within, or, or the man. You've got to start with the person within and find out what is it, you know, why Why do you feel, and because for some of, for some, even at, at times, I'm sure for all of us, you know, we've gone through insecurities. At some point, we've all been teenagers. All of us. So, <laughs> and I talked to several I've been through it. <laughs> and you and I talked about that. That's why you're so funny. We would like to talk about it because then we feel like, oh, I'm not alone. I'm not the only one that thinks that my arms don't look good in pictures, or that, you know, I, I need Botox, or, you know, <laughs> right. so I would think these different things, but we think that I'm the only one that thinks this, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be like a freak if I say it out loud, and, you know, we got to know each other in a quick conversation, and I say things out loud, mm -hmm. and <laughs> oh my God. it's a little bit inappropriate, no. and, you know, my girlfriends will attest to that, but then they go, it's oh, not inappropriate, so, because you're being you, and you're funny. Saying, oh, And then you realize there's so much more to it. That is true. Yep. And that's you, now, if you were to say, this is my favorite tip, what would you say it would be? My favorite tip is my first one. Danielle sees me looking at her. <laughs> <laughs> because she knows that she's part of what inspired his first uh Oh, that guy here, this one. And, yeah. <laughs> One of, you know, there's the eight essences in my book, and that was the other thing that Amy the graphic designer, she read it, and she said, it's got to be sexy, it's got to be fun. She said, but your eight essences, she said, that has to be on the front somewhere. She said, because it's not just sexy. So I'll just say real quickly, the eight essences are spirit, nutrition, health, exercise, education, personality, following your passions, grooming, and sex appeal. And so I have to start off... The, with the book, with the most important part. And a few years ago, you know, we all go through different things in life, and then we come full circle. And it was just, I was going through so many different things, and Danielle said, I have this book for you, you have to read it, and I'm giving it to all of my friends. So she was another one of those, and, and she said, it's Joel Osteen, it's your time. Mm -hmm. She said, it's your time. Mm -hmm. And I read it, and it was exactly what you were saying. Once you start practicing gratitude, your life is going to change, and it's going to change in an amazing way. So, so Danielle inspired this spirit in me, and and that's that's my biggest tip. And You're so alive. Chapter. I have you. to say that. Isn't she? Isn't she? So I love it. It's beautiful. And you know, and I've got to say too. 
with, you know, and everybody sees it a different way and it's like, ooh, you write a sex appeal book. So a lot of times I'll say, oh, my book's about health and beauty because then sometimes they get different notions. And then I was, I was a little bit self-conscious <laughs> with the sex appeal book. And then at first it was, I changed it to spirit. I just thought that sounded stronger. But it was spirituality. And I, and I thought, how are people going to take this? That they're, they're trying to figure out how to be sexy. They want these sex appeal tips. And, okay, you need to practice gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be in touch with your spirit first. Yeah, that is so true. And it is, it's very, uh, for, for any of you who haven't read it, it's definitely a must read. I read it, it's great. Good. So that you feel like you want to share with the audience. Well, I do want to. Um, and, it, and it happened like through the course of, in our mastermind group with Don Claudia, and being involved with Tim and being involved in Tim's book. So immediately after Tim and I met, she said, you know, I know that you're a writer, you know, I'm a writer in the beauty industry. And she said, can you edit my book? Of course I will. So it's editing Tim's book, and we were getting all ready. And, um, and then through it, I was working on my own book. And then the time was come that, okay, our books are just about ready. And I said, well, I'm just publishing my own. You know, I did a children's book six, seven years ago, and I already have my ISBN numbers. I already know how to do it. I'll have to do some more research, but I'm just, I'm publishing it. I just, just, just publish. Okay, so we had our plan. And then, um, and then I also have, although I work for a beauty company, I also, on the back burner, I've got my, my business, Get Branded, where I do marketing, branding, and copywriting. And what, what my um, like slogan or tagline is, dream it, brand it. Oh, so it's very that's good. important. You gotta dream it, and then you <coughs> brand it. And, and so, I, so then Kim and I talked, and I said, well, you know, I don't want my, my old publishing name but it's got to be Get Branded, and we said Get Branded Press. Mm -hmm. And then I said, well, I'm publishing me, and I'm helping you. Why don't I just publish you? Mm -hmm. So she said yes, and Kim did a lot of the promoting for everything. And so I published both of us. I edited both of us, um, worked out the whole interior design for us and our layouts, our headlines and everything. Mm -hmm. And it was awesome. And throughout this process, a, a lot of people knew what we were working on. Mm -hmm. And... Everyone said, well, I want to write a book. And I was meeting a lot of, you know, experts in their field or speakers. And they're like, I mean to write a book, but I'm not sure what to do. Mm -hmm. And it just is this dream in me. I was just, you know, just like in beauty. I just want to help people. And I want their natural beauty to come out. And I just, I want everyone's perfect self-expression to come out. And, and Kim and I had talked about this, and we started to create a plan. And I said, well, what I want to do, you know, our, our books are so important. That needs to happen first. And then come June, I'm going to start teaching, um, writing classes, so writing workshops. And so that will be part of Get Branded, but that will be Get Branded Right. Well, W-R-I-T. It's, it's interesting, how many of you have written a book? And how many of you, if you could, and it was just like pretty easy, would love to write a book? So lots of people still ready to do it out there. That's cool, it's cool, interesting. Yeah, so, so to me it's, it's so much fun and people want to know what do I offer, so you know, I offer ghost writing, editing, headlines, um, inside layout, and then I'll also be teaching uh, how to write a book and how to outline, and then also how to publish. Mm -hmm. So while I publish my and Kim's books, you know, so people start to get up, but, but I'm not publishing other authors at this time. I'm not set up that way, but I am set up to do workshops and show them how they can do it themselves mm -hmm. and hold their hand along the way while they get published. Mm -hmm. I like to call that you're in business for yourself but not by yourself. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, I have one more question. Yes. Uh, yeah. I'm going to make a that for a while. <laughs> <We don't mind. laughs> if you had to say, this was my aha moment or my pivotal point or this is, this is when someone turned on that breaker switch inside of me, what would that be? What was it? What was that thing, that one thing that turned your life on? Thanks a lot. You just could make all of us cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, at first I was thinking, you know, I didn't know if you are talking about like a moment in the last year, the last two years, then I kind of got where you're going out with that and, and what you had said. And I think that part of also where, where I've come 
with this journey, what I was just talking about with Get Branded Press, Get Branded Right, and what I do is I grew up in a really large family. And I was the nice of 10. Irish Catholic, and people that hear Irish Catholic, and if you are, you know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> you know that your dad works 60, 70 hours a week. You know that your mom stayed at home if she could, and you went to Catholic school, and you had your school uniform, and your life was hand me down. We didn't exactly know, but at the time, you kind of got excited. You got to wear the big sister's outfits. But um, but throughout this, my mom just always inspired my creativity. And I kind of think that, you know, a few years ago it occurred to me, I probably didn't draw that great, and my stories might not have been that wonderful when I was five and three, but my mom told me they were, and she said, go write five more. And I oh, said, but wow. I made a mistake on this picture. That's okay, you can fix it, draw another one. Oh. And so I did, so I kind of think, you know, I, I kind of think she wanted to get me out of her hair. There were all these kids. <laughs> <laughs> what a blessing it came out to be. But she did it in a, in a nice way. And so, so I always had confidence in my writing, in my artistic abilities, in, you know, beauty and acting and speaking and all of this. And once again, coming from that big of a family, you kind of know a lot of things are hand-me-downs. And I was, I was raised on, you know, and my mom, she had all these kids. Mm -hmm. And when she was 49, then she went and started with Avon. And she kind of had her own estate, and she finally got a driver's license. But I kind of looked, and I just saw that this woman, all she did was raise all these kids, and a lot of them were ungrateful. And <laughs> there's all types. There's all types in this family. And, and I, but I didn't want that. I didn't want that for me. And she always said, you know, do it. You should do it. You should go do cheerleading. Go do softball. Go do theater. Go do pageants. Go do acting. Go do art. Go do write. Go, go do beauty. So I did. And I did all of them. But there was always another thing was, you kind of have to figure out how to do it, though. <laughs> you know, we don't really have the money. So go in the paper route. Or I went door to door and I painted rocks and I sold them to my neighbors. Oh, and, <laughs> and, but I learned at an early age that I can figure out how to do these things. And we were talking to, we were talking to Chris Riker last night and I was telling him, you know, with, this is such an amazing evening tonight. We have a red carpet event and, and everything that what we did with our publishing, I did it on no budget. It was just a dream and faith. See, and that's exactly what I was talking about earlier. You're showing up for your dreams just by being here. You're going to go after them. And you don't always have to know how it's going to happen. And, and one of my friends had asked me in November, and I said, well, I'm going to publish him and I, you know, to get branded press and, you know, we're going to have watch it. And Marcia said, how are you going to do that? And I said, you know the blue link in MK7? 80% is the why? We just did it. 20% is the can. Yes. So all of you, please, please have the confidence to whatever that little dream is, or if you're not sure, find out what it is and, and just know that you can do it. And it might not always be on schedule. It might not be exactly what you thought it was going to be, but it's going to be amazing. You're awesome. I was in industry and then took this whole 
professional and personal growth and develop with them to the high school that I was teaching marketing. And I just saw the benefit that people had when they began to believe in themselves. Mm -hmm. But most of my audience was more women. Mm -hmm. But then a man was interviewing me, and he said, oh, you need to write a book. And I said, oh, I could do that. I have a whole course for women. And he said, oh, no, you need to write a book for us, for, us, for the men. And I said, OK. And I was just sharing with somebody earlier tonight about I learned so much about the power of saying yes mm -hmm. when it's aligned with your purpose. And I've always known my purpose. I've known it since I was young. Is that my purpose is to inspire others, to reach for their best. And I get very moved. That's what makes my life juicy every day. It's because I know every day something's going to happen that it's going to come back to me that I'm going to hear the difference that something that's been said made in somebody's life. So even teaching high school, I know that seems like that was probably a hard, hard job. Think about the opportunity to inspire somebody every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I also, we, my husband and I, my husband is almost 52 years, he's here with me. <laughs> That's made my journey very exciting and very powerful because I've known I've had somebody right there supporting me the whole way and being my great cheerleader. And I believe that it's important that somebody's in your life that is your cheerleader. And when you and I talked, you talked about balcony people. Mm -hmm. And I have that balcony people in my life, and we all do. You do too. Somebody that sees something in you that you don't see in yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to be for other people, is that balcony person. And for me, when I was, uh, well, actually, started when I was young, my father had that kind of belief in me. And he taught me about being an entrepreneur. And he died when I was 11. And, you know, I know that sounds sad, and it, of course, was. But it empowered me to move into a direction to, to live powerfully because what he had given to me. And for those of you that are parents, I want to tell you how much you accomplished in those first 11 years with your kids. Because who I am today came out of those first 11 years. And it's just been built on. And it's kind of cool because it's exponential. Like putting money in a bank account, that building on became you know, more powerful every year. So I want to encourage you as parents to put, put that investment in your kids in those first years. I know the high school years are tough. <laughs> I know that. And, and I, that's the kids I got in high school. But I want you to know that that investment in your kids when they're young, you may not be able to stand for the teenage years, but you know you did your job. You know, and that they're going to become the people that they have the potential to be. And it's about people's possibilities. It really is. So when I was on this journey, you want me to tell the, the New York story? Yes. About going to New York? I do. As you said, you would like me to share that. Uh, and one of the most empowering things that happened to me on this journey, actually probably one of the most empowering things in my life, I said yes to doing the book. Carlos asked me to write the book. I said, okay. I walked away from saying, okay. I wondered, what did I just do? Am I crazy? <laughs> what am I doing? I had no clue. I had no title. I had nothing in my mind except I had this all this experience that I've been doing in corporate and teaching and so on. And I walked away, and two weeks later, I wake up with the idea of the, the title for the book. Two weeks later, we're on a plane going to New York. My husband and I see our, one of our sons and his family for Christmas. And I knew I needed to interview men to find out what was happening at this stage in each of the industries, what was this what was expected to be successful, what was going to help somebody else become successful in each industry. But I had no idea how I was going to find that out. So we get on the plane, the last leg of our journey, heading to New York. And I'm sitting next to the window, Dale's in the center, in this blank seat. And this man asks if it was taken, and he says, if the door's closed, and I guess it's yours. The man sits down. I didn't even hesitate. This is the message, you guys. This is, see, I'm getting excited. <laughs>
And then he gets this little tap from the flight attendant. She says, you're in the wrong seat. Do we need to take a break and make an Just, announcement? Yeah, for two seconds, I'm sorry. Um, is there a guest with a Lincoln MK7 in your party? I'll take it. I was no. <laughs> <laughs>
you because that makes my life easier. And this is what I do every day. I love my life! <laughs>